This is the course AEDT 1120U, Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies. The title of this video clip is as follows, Asynchronous slash Synchronous Affordances. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, what other considerations are involved in the social order beyond simple communication? Number two, describe Roger's model of communication diffusion. Lumen's theory of communication as coordinated selectivity and Castell's views of social exclusion. And number three, what are the advantages of using synchronous and asynchronous communication technologies in an online course? This video clip will initially focus on the social order or the interactions of the user with others using the computer to mediate the communication process. This is a quote from Desjardins 2005. Open quote. With the advent of these so-called new technologies in the social landscape, particularly dealing with computer-mediated communications, issues of conventions, ethics, rules, language, organization, tradition, and even culture all require revisitation, if not revision. When one individual wishes to communicate with another, and conditions are such that a pers direct person-to-person -person conversation is not possible, that is face-to-face, -face, because of time or distance, some computer-mediated communication technology might be used. Although such a situation requires that both subjects possess basic competencies of the technical order, this is not sufficient for the social interaction to be meaningful, worthwhile, and safe. Successful communication will require knowledge of the written language variants currently used in email, as well as the different conventions of netiquette and even ethics. In other cases, the subjects will have to be particularly aware of the intrinsic delays in certain types of video conferencing or even simple chat. Finally, when these communications involve exchange of confidential or sensitive information, such as credit card numbers, medical or legal information, the subject must be aware of the risks and the user must also be familiar with and follow appropriate and ethical security procedures. The user must construct this procedural knowledge by reflecting on results of a variety of communication experiences and develop a concern for the needs of others in order to develop a strategy of thinking about and acting with others that would be safe, viable, and ethical. This language, the practices, and these conventions once known and used by the subject in computer-mediated communications constitute competencies that this model refers to as competencies of the social order. And that's taken from Desjardins 2005. While communication can be defined as the transmission of a message containing information from a sender to the receiver, this is a gross oversimplification of the interaction. And in a wiki book on the subject of communication theory, several competing theories, see the URL in the presentation slide, have been produced. For instance, in his Diffusion of Innovations model, Rogers, 1995, suggests that SMCRE, for example, the sender message re channel receiver effect, is an appropriate definition as the model corresponds closely to the elements of diffusion in that, and this is a quote, open quote, one, senders can be inventors or opinion leaders, two, the message can be a new idea or product, three, channels can be interpersonal or mass communication, four, receivers can be members of a social system, and five, finally, the effects can be an individual's adoption of social change. Alternatively, Nicholas Luhmann, 2005, suggests that, open quote, communication is coordinated selectivity. It comes about only if ego fixes his own state on the basis of uttered information. Luhmann criticizes the transmission metaphor of communication because it, open quote, implies too much ontology, that is the study of the nature of being, and that the entire metaphor of possessing, having, giving, and receiving end quote, is unsuitable. For Lumen, communication is not an act performed by an actor, but a selection performed by a system. This selection that results in communication is more similar to Darwin's natural selection than to the everyday usage of the term. A social system generates communication 
much as natural environments generate biological traits. And that again is taken from Nicholas Newman, Lumen, 2005. Another view is presented by Manuel Castells, 2004. Castells states that, and this is a quote, open quote, the rise of informationalism and the nature of networks has led global societies toward inequality and social exclusion, widening the cleavage between generic labor and self-reprogrammable labor, global city and the local city, the information rich and the information poor, close quote. This again can be seen as definition of communication which is presented in a network society type of context. And this is all taken from Halevay, Petrick, Anker, Hurley, et al., 2006 communication theory, and it was retrieved from the link that you see on the screen. The following definitions have been provided earlier in this course, and they will be restated here. Please note that the differences between the two lie in the time or temporal and place or geographical. So asynchronous is the use of online resources that are used to facilitate information sharing outside of the constraints of time and place among a group of people. And synchronous can be looked at as being the use of online resources that are used to facilitate information sharing requiring meeting in the same virtual space at the same time. Are asynchronous and synchronous communications as desperate as the definitions imply, or can asynchronous and synchronous te technologies be combined? Why are synchronous tools absolute requirements for online learning? The link included on this page contains a discussion of the advantages, disadvantages of both. You're invited to take a look at that link. Although this blog post is a little on the dated side in 2012, and many new tools and affordances have arrived in the intervening time, much of the discussion is still apropos. The research-based paper listed here points out that synchronous and asynchronous e-learning complements each other. And that's um, a reference to Strist Stinsky, 2008, Asynchronous and Synchronous E-Learning, and you're asked to uh, take a look at that particular paper as well. That brings us to the synthesis questions for this video clip, and these questions are, number one, why is this order or set of competencies referred to as the social order rather than the communication order? Number two, how is the social order moniker referenced in the previous question, reflected in the selected communication theories outlined in slide six. And number three, why has there been such a shift of asynchronous technologies to include synchronous affordances? Provide an argument why asynchronous technologies should continue to be included in online learning environments. And that brings us to the end of this video clip.